If you were watching sports during the 70s and 80s, chances are you've seen the Rainbow Man, and you've likely never been able to forget him. But Roland Stewart, the man underneath that rainbow wig, complete with his John 316 banners, wasn't just a big sports nut out there having a good time. He was on a mission from God, and ended up serving three consecutive life sentences behind bars. Roland Stewart was born in Spokane, Washington in 1944. By his own account, he had a troubled childhood. Both of his parents were alcoholics, his father passed away when he was seven, and his mom died in a fire when he was 15, and that same year, his sister was strangled by her boyfriend. As an adult, Roland fell in love with drag racing, and even opened up an auto shop to work on and repair cars. He also married his high school sweetheart, but when she divorced him soon after the wedding, Roland's world was torn asunder. He packed up his things and moved to a mountain ranch where he became a marijuana farmer while simultaneously making an attempt to grow the world's longest mustache. That's not a stoner joke. Roland actively tried to grow and be recognized for having the world's longest mustache. Knowing that, it should come as no surprise that around the same time, Roland decided it'd be a good idea to put on a rainbow afro wig and a loincloth and attend professional sporting events. The Rainbow Man appeared on TV for the first time at the 1977 NBA Finals in Portland, Oregon. The cameras panned over to catch Roland, dressed in a rainbow wig and loincloth, dancing in the stands. And once Roland felt those cameras on him and the adulation of the crowd, he was obsessed. He caught the bug. The bug that made him pack his things again, sell his pot farm, and move to Hollywood to become a star, thinking he could maybe turn this literally three seconds of fame into something of a career. So, for the next three years, the Rainbow Man started popping up at sporting events all over the place and quickly became famous to anyone who watched sports, which is a lot of people. He found his way onto camera so much in his signature rainbow wig and loincloth that he actually got to be in a Budweiser commercial. That's how famous he was. He went to so many sporting events and found his way into camera shots so much that by the time the 1979 MLB All-Star Game came along, broadcasters actively tried to avoid showing him. TV producers and their crews had to have meetings and come up with a game plan to avoid filming the Rainbow Man. But this wasn't enough for Roland, and in 1980 he reached a turning point. Speaking about attending the 1980 Super Bowl, Roland said, I had gone in my fur loincloth and my wig. The girls loved it. Everywhere I walked, they were patting my butt. I could have held a thousand women in my arms that day, and yet I walked out of there sad. It was the shallowness. I was being seen all over the world but never as myself. Even though he had become famous in a sense, Roland was still in desperate need of attention, something that seemed to dictate his entire life. Given this, given that he dedicated his life to traveling around going to sports games in a rainbow wig and loincloth just to get on camera, and the knowledge that earlier in life he tried to become world famous for having the longest mustache on record, it's safe to assume that he was a man suffering from some sort of mental illness that tragically went unchecked. That night, the night of the Super Bowl, Roland returned to his hotel room depressed and flipped on the TV to see a televangelist named Charles R. Taylor preaching the word of the gospel. That ended up being the only push Roland Stewart needed to become a born-again Christian and ordain himself as a minister. I saw immediately I could take the word of God to the world, he said. I fell to my knees there in that room and allowed Jesus to take control of my life. And that's exactly what he did. His plan now was to keep attending pro sporting events in a rainbow wig and aim to get on camera but now his mission was to spread the word of God. He traded in his loincloth for a new t-shirt with a simple graphic on the front, John 316. With only a few seconds of camera time to spread the word of God, Roland settled for John 316, a passage from the Bible to quickly and concisely share his message with millions of viewers around the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Throughout the mid-1980s, Roland Stewart spent all of his time traveling to sporting events around the world, living out of his car and subsiding on savings and donations, including free game tickets from good Christians who believe what Roland was doing was truly the Lord's work. He attended the 1984 Olympics where he was actually thrown into a Moscow jail for a short time. He went to the World Cup, NFL playoff games, the Indy 500, the Masters, the Kentucky Derby, the MLB World Series, the NBA playoffs, and he even attended the wedding of Prince Charles and Princess Diana. At each venue, he'd plan out his positioning to have the best chance of being on camera, even if that meant buying seats worth thousands of dollars, like directly behind home plate at the World Series, for example. And he even brought a small portable TV to each event so he could watch the televised broadcast so that he would know precisely when he was on camera to hold up his John 316 signs. 
And here's the thing, Roland didn't even like sports. I despise sports, he said. People who go to sporting events are like the Romans who went to watch the lions eat the Christians. I know I'm a strange and unusual vessel. He dedicated his life to the cause for years, but people weren't converting to Christianity en masse from seeing him on TV like he had predicted. And soon enough, as tends to happen, his religious enthusiasm turned sharply into religious paranoia. He became convinced that Jesus was coming back soon and the end of days was nigh. And not enough people were paying attention, and not enough people had given their lives over to the Lord to be saved. Rowan decided he would need to take more extreme measures to get people to listen. And what started as a harmless goof in a rainbow wig holding up a John 3.16 sign turned into an alarming threat. In 1991 at the Masters Golf Tournament, he blew an air horn just as Jack Nicklaus was preparing to putt. Though this was already beyond against the rules of attending a golf tournament, he then detonated a stink bomb for good measure. Later that year, he detonated four more stink bombs in Orange County, California, at the Crystal Cathedral Church, the offices of the Orange County Register newspaper, the Trinity Broadcasting Network offices, and the Joy Bell's Bible Bookstore. Luckily, no one was injured. He also sent out letters of a hit list he wrote consisting of various preachers around the country. He signed those letters, the Antichrist. On September 22, 1992, believing the rapture was only six days away, the Rainbow Man went completely over the edge. He posed as a contractor and picked up two day laborers in downtown LA. He promised them he had worked for them in exchange for payment, but the plan all along was to kidnap them. He then drove them to the Hyatt High Rise Hotel near LAX, Los Angeles' largest international airport, and then took the men up to room 718. He then unexpectedly walked in on a maid who was cleaning the room. Roland drew a gun on her, so she locked herself in the room's bathroom. The two day laborers escaped as soon as they saw Roland draw a weapon, but now the unsuspecting maid was a hostage, and the Rainbow Man was officially a felon, which was his plan anyway. The police came, along with multiple news crews, and surrounded the hotel. Ever the opportunist, Stewart jumped at the chance to be noticed, and placed Bible verse placards all over the windows of the room which he knew would be visible to the camera crews below. Since he was indeed holding someone hostage at this point, the police asked him his demands. And it was quite simple. The Rainbow Man demanded a live three-hour press conference to be broadcast on all the major networks so he could tell everyone about Jesus and warn them about the apocalypse. Of course that didn't happen, but what did happen is that after an eight-hour siege, the SWAT team threw in a concussion grenade, kicked down the door to his room, and hauled the Rainbow Man away. In the room where he held the maid hostage, police found a loaded 45 automatic handgun, two full ammunition clips, 47 live rounds, and of course, a dirty rainbow-colored afro wig. In court, the Rainbow Man was charged with eight felonies, including three for taking hostages, each carrying a life sentence. Stewart then rejected a 12-year plea deal in order to have the form of open court to spread his God Loves You message to the courtroom and national audience. Then, instead of taking the plea deal and serving 12 years, he was found guilty and given three consecutive life sentences. When the verdict came down, he threw a tantrum and was dragged out of court by the bailiffs, the whole time screaming for God to forgive them for what they were doing. He remains in prison to this day, having been denied parole three times. He doesn't expect to ever be released. He ended up being wrong about the end of the world, but he did cause a lasting impact. John 3.16 continues to be an omnipresent part of sports, along with a few variations. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.